So without further ado, please welcome Sarah Reese Brown to the stage. content of the books and whether <laughs> we held a strictly pro or anti werewolf position. Well, fortunately, we were cleared. Pro, very pro. Uh, fortunately, we were cleared. So um, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, it's really exciting uh, to get to see my UK fans and readers. Um, and we were going to show you a little bit of the trailer. Yes. But first, I think we're going to take just a couple of questions. Oh, are we doing, okay, are we doing questions? Uh, well, just a few before, you know, some possible special guest arrives. <laughs> friends, I wonder if you might have a couple questions for Cassie before we all enjoy the trailer. I can't see anything. Uh, I can see <laughs> you over there. Yes. See? <laughs> I've chosen you. Speak. Um, do you know if um, the vein on the cross is released in a book because I can't buy it on my iPod? <laughs> okay, um, will the Bane of Chronicles be, a, uh, be a, re a real book? Uh, because, uh, for people who don't have e-readers. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, we're releasing uh, each story. Sarah here is my co-writer on the Bane Chronicles. Helping me pen such fine tales as Vampires, Scones, and Edmund Perrinale. And uh, the upcoming Midnight Air. So, uh, starring James Harrington. Starring James Harrington. Sexy James And uh, we definitely plan to have it released as a book. It'll be out here, it'll be out in the States. And, um, but because of the way that we're doing the Made Chronicles, we're literally writing them as they're published. So, for instance, you know, we've written the Midnight Air, we've written the one after that, but we haven't written Still the other. Writing five 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 so, we can't. We can't actually publish them in book form until they are all finished. And that is one of the things that um, we thought kind of gave us a unique opportunity about e-publishing was that we could literally, literally post the story as it was being worked on. But the book is going to have to wait until it's actually finished. But it will be out, it'll be out next year. It'll be out soon. And it's got a beautiful cover that you're seeing with piece by piece as it's put up. And there's very a very handsome, handsome man playing Magnus. <laughs> all right, another question. I can see the special. Oh, can, uh, can we reach the people up there? Yes. Hi. If you any question for yourself, I know, sorry. <laughs> if you could have for yourself any personality trait or skill from any character in the series, what would it be and why? Ooh, any personality mm -hmm. trait or skill from any character in the series that I could steal, uh, to have from myself? Yes. Like personally? I don't need to give to anybody else, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to give to anybody else. Um, my favorite series is Lord of the Rings. My favorite character is Frodo, but I, I don't really want to be any shorter than I already am. <laughs> so I think I would steal uh, Legolas' immortality and the ability to see great distances. I would steal Magnus' fashion sense. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last question, then I think it's time for the trailer. All right, uh, down at the very end. I see you. Um, will Tessa ever be included in the Mortal Instruments series as Magnus is included in both and his friends with Tessa? Is Magnus, is Tessa ever going to be in the Mortal Instruments series? No. She already has been. She was in City of Glass. Um, she just didn't get a name, but you see her at the very end of the book talking to Magnus. So, uh, I guess the answer would be I, I, 
I think it, that we all kind of suspect that Tessa may have a part to play in the future uh, world of immortal instruments. Um, will she be a huge major character? Probably not, because people who haven't read it from the license aren't familiar with her, so they're just going to be like, who's this, you know, random woman who's <laughs> in the middle of the story? But, uh... You seem important. You seem like you've had a tort affair with the Shadowhunter. Tell us about that. Yeah, tell us all about the yeah, tort affairs you've had with Shadowhunters. But, um, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't have a bit of a part to play, so... And look out for her, that's what I would say. Yeah. Like all immortal characters, most importantly, Church. Yeah, Church is <laughs> in every book. He's the only character who's actually, I think, in every single book, because I really like cats. <laughs> and I would end, my friend Holly writes books in which she murders cats, so I'm <gasps> writing non-cat <laughs> Um, so we are going to take a bunch more questions um, after the trailer, so don't worry, um, we were just waiting for our extra special guests. You'll see, I'm stolen because I can't see anything from that But that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm I guess it's there. there. <laughs> we both took him. We went back and forth. It's like the heavenly fire on him. Alright, so I think, yes, we were going to show the Trailer time. Oh, we can. I think it's in the 
international trailer, so you might have seen a little bit of it, but uh, there's a scene in which um, uh, Clary runs to hug Simon and Jay's is sort of watching. And it's, um, uh, it's, it's great because... Yeah, yeah. It's great, it's great for a lot of reasons, but it's great because I was actually focusing on, on, on uh, Clary and Simon who are, you know, killing it. They're great and they're, you know, in the hug. And then, but you can see Jamie in the background and uh, there, are, there are some actors who sometimes in the background of a scene when they're not, they're not actually focusing on it, you can see them kind of shaking their watch, their forward, they've wandered off, but he's still being Jace, and Jace is looking uh, sort of like he's throwing up his heart <laughs> on the floor. It's actually, though a disgusting metaphor, really a great scene, so actually that was my favorite. I've made a career out of being in the background. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of, it's kind of my thing. <laughs> I'm around the focus, I'm just there for a second, and then I disappear. Um, my favourite moment in the movie, what will keep you happy? Let's see the greenhouse scene, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd like that. <laughs> You're all filthy. <laughs> Which one did you prefer to write? The mortal device with the <laughs> mortal device? <laughs> uh, it's like picking between kids. I love them both. They're both uh, great fun to write. I love the you know historical background of the infernal devices. Um, I love the characters, but I also love the mortal instruments. Uh, you know, and those were my first books. You know, those were my babies. So um, I love them both. I couldn't, I couldn't pick a favorite. So one one's like a kid in like a small bed, and the other one's a kid in jeans. Yeah, the other one's like a hulking, surly adolescent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see our uh, bed. Sun? Yes? I reach for it. Hi, how are you? Um, I have a question for Jane. Um, a lot of the scenes seem to be very physical. Um, I know you tweeted the other day with camera that you were back in training for City of Ashes. Um, I just want to know, is there any scenes that you found particularly grueling? Particularly brutal? Yeah, and grueling to film. Um, yeah, I mean, physically and mentally, the, the entire shoot was pretty draining for me. Um, I'm going to be pretty open and honest with you now. I mean, I let in, I let in a lot of darkness with Jace. Um, you know, obviously with the movie as it stands, you know, with the book we have such a, you know, we have however many hundreds of pages to, you know, to explore the characters. And so there are elements of Jace which I would have loved to have put into the movie, but couldn't because it would have just made him seem really schizophrenic. And yes, he, yes, he sort of <laughs> turns, to, yeah, yeah, he can turn on a dime and yeah, he can be, you know, jovial one minute and then the next minute incredibly vulnerable and the next minute, you know, really moody. Um, but I was, I definitely focused on his moody aspect more than I did on anything else. So for me personally, coming out of shooting, I was just like, oh my goodness, like, I am drained. Um, there's a massive, you know, Hotel de Moor was a huge deal for us. We shot like, we shot for like a week in this, like, dilapidated, horrible hotel. Did you come to that? I missed that. I was, yeah, I was lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> lucky you. Lucky you. Sure thing. Right, multi-million dollar. <laughs> Yeah, it's horrible to be a handsome movie star. We're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just going to sit here and just snipe each other. <laughs> um, yeah, so Hotel Them All was a, physically was very draining, but the entire, the entire shooting was pretty, uh, pretty draining for me. And I'm seriously looking forward to going back and doing number two. <laughs> no, I really am. I know that sounded really... It's like 